Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Over the past few months I've presented videos on various pre-pottery Neolithic sites in the Fertile Crescent, from Gebekli Tepe in Karahan Tepe in Turkey, to Tel Caramel in Syria, Ancient Jericho in the West Bank and Atlet Yam off the coast of Israel. We've seen the incredible art and architecture these people were capable of and we've even found their bones, but what did they actually look like? Well, thanks to the 10 to 11,000 year old site of Tel Azwad in Syria, we can actually answer the question. Tel Azwad is located 35 kilometers east of Damascus and is well known for its human burials that date back to the pre pottery Neolithic B. But some of the human remains are quite different from the norm because a number of schools have been plastered over to create the true likeness of the deceased. Tel Azwad really is an incredible sight and helps us look at the pre pottery Neolithic people in a different way a very human way. Human remains from this time period are rare and plastered schools are even more rare and, after being in the ground for thousands and thousands of years, on their discovery the plaster was extremely fragile. Although there are dozens and dozens of pre-pottery Neolithic sites in the Fertile Crescent and beyond, only six of them have plastered schools and these sites are all clustered in the southern Levant, with Tel Azwad being the one where we find the best preserved examples. These plastered faces are not like the death masks we see in other ancient cultures, which I'm sure have been made overly flattering, perfecting facial features to promote a specific image in life and death. No, here we find that the plaster has been directly applied to the schools. Yes, they could be idealised and beautified in accordance to the cultural standards of the day, they could be modelled after gods or ancestors, or of course the plastered faces could be modelled on the face of the person that died, or the people that created them. The faces are very realistic, there is no unbelievable or supernatural embellishments, and they look just like any individual that's living in the modern era. There looks to be a real intimacy about the faces, and the fact they're around 10,000 years old does stir the emotions. Tel Azwad was discovered in 1967 and was first excavated in 1971 and 1972. A second period of excavation took place 30 years later, between 2001 and 2006. Tel Azwad is a site with 18 archaeological levels, each representing a complete episode of village occupation. But although there are 18 levels, the site can be broadly subdivided into three main stages. The early pre-pottery Neolithic B, between 10,700 and 10,200 years ago. The mid pre-pottery Neolithic B, between 10,200 and 9,500 years ago and then the late pre-pottery Neolithic B. The site shows evidence of agriculture and animal domestication, there are a variety of architectural structures, tools, decorative artefacts, animal and human remains and so much more. It really is a fascinating site and one I'll discuss in detail in a future video, because in this video what I really want to focus on are the plastered schools. The burials in the earliest phases at Tel Azwad were associated with buildings, just like we see at every other pre-pottery Neolithic site, a clear standard throughout the Fertile Crescent. But when in the mid to late pre-pottery Neolithic B, we see the emergence of more rectangular architecture, there is a drastic change in burial practices. The deceased were no longer buried into or next to their homes, as we see in the early pre-pottery Neolithic B, but instead they were grouped together in designated funerary areas, located on the margins of the built-up area, and it's from this period where we find the plastered schools. Three funerary areas have been located so far, and two of them have been excavated. 
These areas became funerary complexes, but older archaeological layers, including older abandoned architecture, is below. The first excavated cemetery covers an area 126 meters squared, and 22 burials have been discovered. And the earliest burials, the founding burials of the cemetery, are the ones that have the plastered schools. Later burials seem to be arranged around the plastered schools, which seems to indicate their importance. The plastered school burial in the cemetery appears as a shallow rounded depression, with the schools placed into two groups on the edges of the depression. The space is then occupied by an adult burial. There is also a jumble of bones between the skeleton and the schools. We also find the burial of a child aged between 0 and 1 year old, and these remains purposefully rest on two of the plastered schools. A later burial is then placed on top, that of a teenager, with the head resting on a plant cushion and wearing a necklace of stone beads. The whole burial is covered by a black burnt layer, which forms a mound, and the southern limits of this mound are surrounded by a low wall of basalt stones. The discovery of nearby hearths also seems to indicate that offerings were made. The second set of plastered schools that have been discovered were found at the bottom of a small pit, in the ruins of an earlier house. Here we find four plastered schools, but also a plastered face with no school attached. We then find the school of a five to nine year old child, and this school has no plastered face. Later burials were dug into the layers above, but whether these burials relate directly to the plastered schools we don't know. One of the plastered schools was damaged from a later burial, that of an infant that was placed in a sleeping position. The four plastered schools form a massive compact construction, organised concentrically around the non-plastered school of the child aged 5 to 9. Interestingly, they were placed one after another, and each one that was placed was stuck to the previous one by a patch of earth. The burial is therefore one single event. The plastered face without a school was placed above, and the missing school was probably removed by accident from the later disturbances at the site. The plastered schools really are quite amazing. In the first excavation area, the plaster is described as light beige in colour, made of a mixture of earth, crushed calcite or lime, and sometimes painted red. Eye sockets are generally filled in, and we know that each plastered school is showing the eyes as closed. Charcoal black lines look to indicate eyelashes. We also see a horizontal slit in the plaster where the eyelids meet. Cheekbones where prominent, and the noses where complete are finely modelled, and whether short or long, they were generally straight and strong. Mouths are generally small and the lips are thin, with oval chins that were slightly pointed. We do have a few preserved ears, and these were modelled in a very realistic way. All in all, the faces are generally regular and oval in shape. In the second burial site, two of the plastered schools were made with white plaster material, which was then painted with red ochre. The eye sockets are filled in to reproduce eyeballs, but again the eyes are depicted as closed. Eyelashes are made using bitumen, cheekbones are apparent, and the noses are often long and narrow. Each mouth is again quite small, and the lips are thin. Even though the faces are realistic, the ears are not, especially compared to the previous burial site. The best preserved school from the second location is somewhat different. The colour is quite an intense yellow ochre, and the plaster is fine grain, and the surface has been carefully smoothed. There is a certain finesse to this plastered school, and the work does look to be the most skilled, especially the nose, and it maybe indicates that this person was someone of great importance. It's also worth noting the limits of the plaster, 
i.e. where it ends on the school, and it's therefore very possible there was hair on each school, possibly made from a now decomposed organic material. So, that's a description, but what do the plastered schools actually mean? Why was the practice done? There certainly seems to be a ritual behind it, especially with how they were arranged. We also need to consider that it's not just a practice of Tel Aswad, but plastered schools are also found at the pre-pottery Neolithic sites of Tel Ramad, Bisamun, Jericho, Ein Gazelle and Kafar Haharesh. The plastered schools are often directly or indirectly associated with other unplastered human remains, whether a full body, bones or a skull. At all the sites just mentioned, we also see that plastered schools are generally clustered together, not deposited on their own. At Jericho we find a heap of 7 plastered schools, and at Tel Ramad we find 12 together. Wherever we find plastered schools, whether inside a cemetery or under a house, they look to be placed at a base level or even into the older remains, an older phase of each specific settlement, just as we see at Tel Aswad. We also see this at Kafar HaHoresh, with the plastered schools being placed in an area that's dug into older soils and then marked with specific markers. At Ein Gazelle, the plastered schools were found on the ground and they were placed after burning or destroying an older house. It therefore shows that plastered schools were deposited on or inside the older occupation phase and so I wonder if these schools belong to the people who lived there before. I wonder if the pre-pottery Neolithic bee people had some kind of ritual where they collected the schools of those that lived at the site before them, used a plaster mixture to make the faces of the ancestors come to life, and then placing them in a ceremony at the basal level of their new settlement, or at the very top of the old. Then, with the plastered schools, maybe the body of the first person or infant, maybe even a sacrifice was laid to rest with the plastered schools. This ceremony or practice could have marked the end of the old era and also the start of the new. This is just my own hypothesis based on the evidence, but the purpose of the plastered schools does remain a mystery, and it is one of the great unanswered questions of archaeology. But thanks to the incredible work that's done by archaeologists, they have allowed us to speculate as to why the practice was done and what it meant to the people in this village 10 to 11,000 years ago. Whatever the truth, these are the faces of pre-pottery Neolithic people, and that's according to the people themselves. A truly incredible archaeological find, and one that has memorialised our ancestors forever. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.